For this session, we will talk about your accounts payable or one of your most used financial liabilities. So uh, most of your financial liabilities that you know or that we know is composed of your payables. And when we talk about your payables, some of the things that come into your mind are these items. So we have your accounts payable, your notes payable, your loan payable, and your bonds payable. So these items before are already discussed in the counterpart of your asset. As you all know, in this particular subject, we are talking about your liabilities. So in your asset section before, you have discussed this already. So what is the counterpart? AR for accounts payable, notes, pay notes receivable for notes payable, loans receivable for loans payable, and your investments, investment in bonds for bonds payable. So these are the counterparts of these topics in your asset section. However, some rules, some rules applicable for asset is not applicable for liability. And somewhat, some rules applicable for liability is not also applicable for asset. So for this session, we will dwell mainly for your accounts payable or your trade accounts payable. So let's start. Accounts payable are open obligations of a debtor, which is unsupported. You all know all you already know that accounts payable is normally an open account. Open account. Why is it known as an open account? Because it is unsupported. Generally, your liabilities or your receivables can either be supported or unsupported. So when we say it is supported, it means there is an evidence that supports that particular liability or receivable. In which case, we have this following supported liabilities. We have your notes payable, which is of course supported by a notes or a promi sorry note. We also have your loans payable, which is also supported by a contract of loan. And then we also have your bonds payable, which is supported by a bond indenture. Okay, so the difference lies on a supporting document or an evidence of that liability. Take note, if we talk about accounts, it is unsupported, meaning it is an open account. But with your other types of your financial liabilities, which notes, loans, or bands, they are supported. Notes, promissory note, loans payable, contract of loan, and bands payable, band indenture. Now, we go with your type of accounts payable. So your accounts payable can be classified as either trade or non-trade. So what is the difference of a trade accounts payable or a non-trade accounts payable? Actually, it is much the same with your trade accounts receivable and non-trade accounts receivable. But in this case, we are more into the side of the uh, buyer. We are more into the side of the buyer. Because when we talk about accounts receivable, you are on the side of a seller. But when we talk about accounts payable, you are on the side of a buyer. So in a trade accounts payable, this arises from the ordinary course of the business. So when we say it arises from the ordinary course of the business, it means it is due to your purchase, due to your purchase. But if that is a non-trade accounts payable, it does not arise from the course of the business. So this one is not, this one arises. So when you say it does not arise from your uh, ordinary course of the business, business it means it is non-purchase related. So you already know also that in classifying your accounts as trade or non-trade, everything with a trade on its name or account name is considered a trade liability. So for example, 
if you have a red your trade accounts payable trade notes payable those are all trade liabilities so in case you are asked how much is the total trade liability everything with trade on their names or account names are trade liabilities so Again, when the problem states their trade accounts payable, trade notes payable, those are trade liabilities, which arises from the ordinary course of the business. And when we talk about ordinary course of the business, since we are looking on the buyer side, that is in the form of a purchase. Now, we look into your recognition. So the recognition criteria is based on your PFRS 15. Remember, in your AR or accounts receivable, the recognition criteria also comes from your PFRS 15. What is PFRS 15 again? PFRS 15 is your revenue from contracts with customers. If you still remember, this superseded your past 18, which is your revenue. Now, in AR, of course, you have discussed this one in your AR PFRS 15. You have your five step model of recognizing revenue. But mainly, this is for the seller. How about on the part of the buyer? When will you recognize? So, on the part of the buyer, you will recognize that particular purchase or liability upon satisfaction of the performance obligation of the seller. So in short, this is the seller. At the time, there is already satisfaction of that uh, contract to the buyer. We recognize your liability. Generally, how do we make your entry on this recognition of liability? So you debit, purchases, you credit, accounts payable. Therefore, if ever you are asked how much is your accounts payable, then you should look into your purchases. Okay. So how does your accounts payable look like? So of course, accounts payable is the liability. Therefore, the normal balance is on the credit side. The normal balance is on the credit side. So the beginning balance of an accounts payable is on the credit side. Then we have your credit purchases. When we talk about credit purchases, these are purchases on account. Sir, why? Because your purchases can either be a cash purchase or a credit purchase. Therefore, when we talk about AP, we will only place your credit purchases. Again, when we talk about accounts payable, we will only place your credit purchases. Because if that is a cash purchase, of course, there is no liability. Because this one is already paid. Okay? So only place credit purchases on your accounts payable. Also, you deduct any returns. If there is a return, of course, it will decrease your accounts payable. And then if ever you have any payments, it will decrease your accounts payable. Therefore, you get your ending accounts payable. So take note, if ever the question is, how much is the ending accounts payable? This is how we compute it, okay? So based on your T account, beginning balance, plus credit purchases, less returns, less payments, we have your ending accounts payable. Now, how do we get for your credit purchases? This is based on your uh, cost of goods sold. Again, how do we get for it? So we have your beginning inventory plus your purchases less ending inventory. We have your cost of goods sold. So to compute for your credit purchases, you need to work back. You need to work back and get the purchases unit. Okay. So if ever the question asks you about your accounts payable ending. This is the relation that you need to look. What is that relation? The relation of your credit purchase to your accounts payable. So here is that relation. So where will you look into your credit purchase? Based on your cost of goods sold. Take note, 
your purchases should be classified whether it is a cash purchase or a credit purchase. Therefore, when you get this purchase, you need to classify it because there might be a chance that there is a cash purchase. So you need to reduce that purchase, okay? Again, if you are asked for ending accounts payable using this relationship, what is the relation that you need to look at? Your credit purchase and your accounts payable. Next, we look, we look into your measurement. Just like any accounts that we need to learn, we always take a look into these items. Remember, in accounting a particular line item, there are three important things that you need to learn. First is the recognition. When do we recognize it? We're done with this. This is when the performance obligation is satisfied. Another thing that you need to look in case you are learning for a line item is the measurement. So when we talk about your measurement, you need to know the initial and the subsequent measurement. And then finally, your presentation. But actually for presentation, this is already covered by PS1, whether we will place it as current or non-current. And you already know this one because we have already finished discussing that whether we will classify an item as current or non-current. Now, since we're done with recognition, let's talk about your measurement. So how do we measure your accounts payable? So initially, we measure it at fair value. You already know that in measuring your uh, financial assets, it is measured at fair value. Therefore, in a financial liability, it is still measured at fair value. By the way, financial assets and financial liability is accounted using the same standard, PFRS 9. So initially, it is measured at fair value. So how do we measure your fair value? Generally, it is your invoice price plus free. Do you still remember what is an invoice price? Do you still remember your AE100 regarding invoice price? If ever you are into purchases, you are played into two types of prices. So what are those prices? We have your list price, and then we have your invoice price. Okay, so list price is gross of trade discount. Invoice price is net of trade discount. Invoice price is net of trade discount. What is a trade discount again? If ever you still remember, so for example, purchase 300,000 uh, goods, 20, 10, 210, and 30. What do we call this? What do we call this one again? We call this one as your trade term or uh, this is your discount term okay 2010 here pertains to your trade discount 210 here pertains to your purchase discount okay just like uh, we just need to remember this 2010 is your trade discount 2 over 10 is your purchase discount so when we talk about lease price this is gross of trade discount. When we talk about invoice price, that is net of trade discount. Therefore, here in your initial measurement, when we say invoice price, you already reduce the price with the trade discount. So in our example, we have here 300,000, right? So 300,000 less the trade discount of 20 and 10. How do we apply this 20 and 10 again? We apply it successively. We apply it successively. So first 300,000, you deduct the 20%, which is 60,000. We have 240,000. And then you deduct the another 10% because you have 20 on the first one and then 10 on the second one. Again, apply it successively. So meaning after applying 20%, you apply the 10%. Do not apply it total, in total. I hope you still remember that 
this is AE100 topic, I am just refreshing your minds about it so that uh, at least you are refreshed with these items. So here we have 10% trade discount. After 20%, you apply it again, 24,000. So how much then is your invoice price? 240 less 24, we have 216,000. That's how your invoice price works. And then you add any freight. Later on, we will talk about your different freight terms. But I know you have already finished this one when you went in your AE100 and also AE105. So long as your initial is fair value, that is invoice price plus free. Actually, when we talk about your fair value, this is your net accounts payable, whether purchase discount is taken or not. Okay? Do you still remember how do you recognize merchandise inventory? You recognize merchandise inventory whether the discount is taken or not. Do you still remember that? In every asset, right? If ever you still remember, in every asset, whether that is uh, property, plant, and equipment, merchandise inventory, intangible asset, if you purchase it on an open account, you will record it net of discount, whether it is taken or not. Therefore, in recognizing your accounts payable also, you should recognize it at net of the purchase discount, whether taken or not. Okay, I hope we are still clear here in your initial measurement. So invoice price plus freight. We will talk about your freight later on. Next, subsequent measurement. How do we subsequently measure your accounts payable? To subsequently measure your accounts payable, we subsequently measure it at net value. Actually, if you still remember your AR, you deduct all those items such as your allowances, your allowance for freight discount, your allowance for bad debts, your allowance for uh, free charges and sales discounts, etc. So you measure it at net realizable value. Also, in your AP or accounts payable, you measure it at net value. So when we say net value, the net payment. And what is net payment? That is the amount you need to pay for that accounts payable. So again, you look into the settlement value of your accounts payable. But generally, we don't subsequently measure it because whatever is your liability, that is already. Unlike in your AR, you provide for uh, discounts, you provide for your doubtful accounts. In AP, you cannot say that you are doubtful because you are the debtor here. You cannot say, ah, I think I cannot pay, so I need to remove this accounts payable. That's, now, that's not how it works, okay? So generally, you cannot place a doubtful accounts payable because you cannot say that, ah, I will not pay this one. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. So again, you still need to pay it at its net value, whatever is the settlement value of that accounts payable. So how do we measure your accounts payable? Initially at fair value, subsequently at net value. Next, we talk about the recognition of your discounts, whether it is recognized gross versus net. So when we talk about gross versus net, this is the accounting for any purchase discount. Okay. So what is the difference between your gross method and net method? So under gross, it is gross of any discount, meaning discount or purchase discount is not yet deducted. While net method, discount or purchase discount is already deducted. Okay? So initial measurement, gross versus net. Under your gross, discount is not yet deducted. Net discount is already deducted. How do we record the discount when the discount is taken? When the discount is taken, we have here purchase discount. When can we say that the discount is taken again? When paid within the discount period. Okay? When paid within the discount period. In our example a while back, we have uh, 20, 10, 210, and 30. These two 
2 here is the purchase discount. 10 here is the discount period. Meaning, if you pay within 10 days, you get 2% discount. Therefore, in the recording of the discount, you will record 2% if you pay within 10 days. Okay? That is your discount period. So under gross, you credit purchase discount. Under net, you do not record any purchase discount. So here, there is purchase discount. Here, no purchase discount. If you still remember, this is a topic under your AE100. Again, I just place it here to refresh your memories. I know you already mastered this item. Okay? So under gross, take note, you record a purchase discount when paid within the discount period. Under net method, you do not record any purchase discount. How about if discount is not taken, meaning paid beyond discount period, okay? What if it is paid beyond discount period, meaning discount is not taken? So in our example, 210, for example, you paid on the 15th day. If you paid on the 15th day, there is no discount. If paid within the discount, Within 15th day, there is no discount. So gross, no loss is recorded. No loss is recorded. So you just debit, accounts payable, your credit cash. But in net, we have purchase discount loss. We have purchase discount loss. Take note, if there is discount, we record purchase discount. If there is discount not taken, we have purchase discount loss. So purchase discount loss is only recorded here under net. Purchase discount is only recorded here under gross. Take note of this items, okay? Purchase discount loss appears only in net method. Purchase discount loss appears only under your net method. While your purchase discount appears only under gross method. How do we treat your purchase discount loss again? It is considered as an adjunct. Account. When we say a junk account, it increases your purchases, right? It increases your purchases. So, uh, therefore, it affects your cost of goods sold, okay? A junk account, it increases your purchases. It is treated as uh, an increase in your cost of goods sold. Here. Okay, I hope we are clear here in your gross versus net. Next, we proceed now with your free. As you all know, a while back, we talked about your initial measurement, that is your invoice price plus your free. So we talk now about your free. So under your free, we have uh, this different free terms. So what are the free terms that you know? We have your shipping point and your destination. This shows the ownership over the goods while in transit, okay? Again, this is an AE100 topic, but uh, let's just refresh your memory about it. So your three terms, shipping point, ownership over these goods while in transit. So if it's shipping point, it is now owned by the buyer, okay? So there is accounts payable. If it is destination, it is owned by the seller. No accounts payable yet. Clear? Okay. Shipping point, it is owned by the buyer upon shipment. So there is accounts payable. Destination, owned by the seller upon shipment. So no accounts payable. So the question is, when is there an accounts payable? Only when it is already received. Okay, take note. In shipping point, upon shipment, there is already an account payable upon shipment. In destination, you will only record accounts payable when received. Okay, shipping point, upon shipment, destination when received. Clear? Another freight term is as to your freight prepaid and freight collect. Freight prepaid and freight collect talks about as to the liability or who paid the freight charge. When we talk about freight charge, this is the freight cost. 
or the shipping fee. Okay? You all know this one as your shipping fee. So freight prepaid, meaning it is prepaid by the seller. So who paid the seller? Freight collect, it is collected to the buyer. So who paid the buyer? Okay. So again, a review of your freight terms. We have your shipping point and destination. This talks about your ownership while in transit. And then we also talk about when will we record the accounts payable. In shipping point, you record already the accounts payable. In destination, you record it only when it is received. Another freight term is your freight prepaid and freight collect. So in freight prepaid, this talks about your liability or who paid the freight charge. So when we say freight prepaid, it is prepaid by the seller. Therefore, it is the seller who paid it. In freight collect, it is collected to the buyer. Therefore, it is the buyer who paid it. Next. We talk now with the combination of these items. So we have your FOB shipping point freight prepaid, FOB shipping point freight collect, FOB destination freight prepaid, and FOB destination freight collect. So here are the items which affects your accounts payable. Take note, the purchase itself, purchase itself affects your accounts payable. We are now talking on the freight. Okay. So what is this freight? This is the shipping fee. This is the shipping fee. When will the shipping fee affect accounts payable? Are we clear? When will the shipping fee affect accounts payable? So FOB shipping point freight prepaid adds to your accounts payable. FOB destination freight collect deduct to your accounts payable. So when is it affect when does it affect your accounts payable? Two items only or two instances. FOB shipping point, freight prepaid, FOB destination, freight collect. Remember that. When does your shipping fee affect accounts payable? Two items only. Shipping point, freight prepaid, it increases your accounts payable. Destination, freight collect, reduces your accounts payable. Remember this, these two items. Okay? Forget the other two, just remember these two. FOB shipping point freight prepaid increases your accounts payable. FOB destination freight collect reduces your accounts payable. Therefore, when we talk about your initial, uh, which is your invoice price plus freight, when we talk about freight, it is not only addition. So what adds shipping point freight prepaid? What reduces FOB destination freight collect? Okay? So I hope we are clear. Purchase. That is for invoice price. Okay? Upon your purchase, you record the invoice price. When will we record? Shipping point upon shipment, destination upon receipt. Clear? Next. Freight. When will we record the freight? FOB shipping point freight prepaid, add. FOB destination freight collect, deduct. I hope we are clear here. Again, purchase, you record it either. Shipping point upon shipment, destination upon receipt. Freight, how does it affect your accounts payable? It depends whether it is shipping point freight prepaid or destination freight collect. Two instances only which affects your accounts payable. Okay, let's now talk about, uh, and let's have an example about this item. So, you only have two things to remember in accounts payable. What are those two things? The purchase, which talks about your invoice price. Take note of the effect of your discount and your shipping point or your destination. And then you also talk about your freight. So remember of the two instances. Okay. So let's have an example here. The balance in Dallas Company's accounts payable account at December 31, 2016 was 2 million before adjustment. Okay, the first one. Goods were in transit to Dallas Company. The invoice was 200,000 FOB shipping point. We said that it is 
if it is FOB shipping point, it increases your accounts payable upon shipment. Okay. When is it shipped? December 29, 2016. So since FOB shipping point increases your accounts payable, you need to add this one. You add 200,000. Clear? Next one. Goods ship FOB shipping point from a vendor to Dallas company were lost in transit. The invoice cost was 150,000. I told, uh, you know, you already know this one in your accounts receivable. Whether or not it is lost in transit, you should include it. So this one, you have a claim. At the same time, you have additional liability, which is 150,000. Lastly, FOB destination. Goods ship FOB destination received January 6. Okay, if it's FOB shipping, uh, if it's FOB destination, it will only increase your accounts payable upon receipt. When is your receipt? January 16, I know, January 6, 2017. You only receive it on January 6, 2017. And the question is December 31, 2016. Should we include it? Do not include this one. Why? Because we need to record only December 31. This is already 2017, the date of receipt. Okay, remember this. We have only two items on your purchase. Shipping point, you record it upon shipment. Okay, so December 29, record it already. Destination, when will you record it? Upon receipt. When did you receive it? January 6, 2017. So was it within December 31, 2016? No. Therefore, do not include it. So if ever we are to uh, account for the accounts payable now, so we have your beginning unadjusted, we have 2 million, plus FOB shipping point, 200,000, plus your another shipping point, 150,000. So we have 2 million, 350,000. Okay? So just take note of the effects of your purchase as your shipping point or destination. So these are the only items that you need to remember here in accounts payable. Your purchase as to your uh, initial measurement, which is uh, it is at your invoice price, and your freight, your two instances only, right? Your two instances. As to presentation, you already know it is current if it's payable within. 12 months, or it is trade, non-current if it is more than 12 months. That's it for your accounts, David.